Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is the 26th of March, uh, 2014, and here in New York City, it is still very cold. I can't believe it. I guess in Pittsburgh, too, guys. It must be cold there, too. Alabama, what's it, what's it like down there, Al? Uh, it's been cooler uh, than it's been. It was sunny last week and cooler this week. No snow. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so we have um, a show tonight where um, I've been calling it a meetup. Um, I, I right at the end of DML, um, I, I was I was told you guys, you, your youth voices folks, you, you need to find those uh, hear me people from Pittsburgh. And um, we sat down and talked, and it was a really fast, quick, packed talk. And I think we're going to unpack a little bit of it tonight. I hope. Um, and so we have with us Jessica Kaminsky and Jessica Pachuda. I, did I get it right? I think so. Pretty close, yeah. What is it, actually, then? Pachuda. Pachuda, okay. So with us from Pittsburgh, you guys can introduce yourselves a little bit more. Um, who are the co-directors? Is that what you would say? I've seen our managers, whatever you are. Um, <laughs> you'll explain. Of... Um, Okay, I'm of hear me, hearme.net, um, and I, I do want to frame it uh, before, uh, just to gather people's attention. One of the things that we, one of the interesting differences that we noticed is that hear me um, is a an audio mainly, and you're playing with video to um, place where students get their voices out there, and you really organize well to get those voices to the decision makers, um, and what we, what I was kind of proud of in showing you Youth Voices is how we have like a lot of peer-to-peer -peer work going on. So that's one of the places that I think we could have some interesting conversations. Um, we're also kind of mainly we're writing project folks, and so many of us are, and so we we're very writerly, <laughs> and you guys, um, so we had some interesting talk about that, too. Like, do you write first before you record and so forth? But let's just jump in. Introduce yourselves, if you don't mind, Jessica, and how do you how do you guys do this? Jessica and Jess, or how do you want to do it? Miss <laughs> uh, Kaminsky and Ms. Judith. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, we usually just confuse people a lot. Um, okay, thanks. So, sorry about that. <laughs> Remember, we might be on a podcast, though, so people... Anyway, it's okay. Well, we, we jump in on top of each other's sentences, probably conf equally confusing enough. Okay. Um, sure do. <laughs> in real life, we are... One of us is taller and one of us is shorter, so that's usually a good descriptor. Okay. Um, and and uh, Jess 1, Jess 2, um, I'm taller, she's shorter. Uh, okay. Jess also sometimes goes by the nickname JP, if that helps. We'll take any any nickname you want to give us. <laughs> ja, J, so is that okay, Jess? We'll go with JP tonight, Absolutely. just so we know who we're talking to. That's what to. everyone we work with does. <laughs> ah, okay, good. So Al Elliott is with us as well, um, and Shantanu Saha is with us, uh, with his son there, um, grabbing his ear. That's great. I wish you could see that. And Mary Beth Whitehouse is with us as well. Um, why don't we, why, Shantanu and Al and Mary Beth, why don't you guys introduce yourselves very briefly first, and then we will get to the Jessicas here. <laughs> Shantanu, why don't you go ahead. So, uh, I'm Shantanu Saha. I'm a, uh, a teacher at the Baccalaureate School for Global Education. I currently am teaching 7th uh, grade uh, technology, and uh, I have an 8th grade advisory and a 10th grade advisory. Uh, but um, the majority of the kids that I'm teaching, the majority of the kids that are active on Youth Voices right now are these seven graders. And, and, and if I can say, one of the wonderful things you add, your students add, in addition to the literature <laughs> blogs that they write, is, is, is media. And right now there are a slew of um, scratch stories that uh, your students have put up there. So. Um, so that's been interesting to watch. Mary Beth, welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm Mary Beth Whitehouse. I'm a teacher in the Bronx at IS 190. I teach 6th, 7th, and 8th grade mathematics to special education students. Um, but previous to that, I was a self-contained 8th grade special education teacher, and I still 
have a lot of the trappings of uh, having taught English and social studies for years, and so we do a lot of writing in my class. And Mary Beth isn't an active user of Youth Voices yet, but last year you sent us some podcasts about the shirt, um, shirt wise. How do you say it? The, shirt the Triangle Shirt Waste Factory Fire. Yeah, factory mm -hmm. Fire, right? Actually, yeah. yesterday was the anniversary, and my right. took my students to go chalk, which is a temporary art installation and also a memorial for the people who died and people around the city agree to memorialize a certain victim. For my students, we're about four blocks away from where a woman named Sarah Cooper lived. Hmm. So I took my students there and they created this chalk display. We stopped people on the street and explained what it was and took photographs. And it's kind of nice to be part of a really large project. Cool. Right. And um, this year, you're, and one of the reasons I thought to invite you this year is because you just sent me and we're getting them up on Youth Voices and we got to talk about self-publishing as one of the values here, but uh, we'll get to that. Um, but uh, is the letters, you've letters to our new mayor um, that your students have, have created. So I thought it was an appropriate moment yeah. to invite you to talk to these people from Hear Me. Um, and, and Al, go ahead. Well, I'm Al Elliott, a uh, fifth grade school teacher, uh, Hoover, Alabama, uh, host of uh, uh, Google Plus Hangout, uh, Monday's Eve discussion, uh, graduate student at University of Alabama, Birmingham, technology enthusiast, and just, um, you know, all around cool guy, I guess. I'm during <laughs> spring break. <laughs> You're on spring break? That's nice. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're You've also done break. some spoken word stuff. You, right, right. I've, well. I've uh, performed as a spoken word artist, uh, hip-hop artist. I sit on the board of Real Life Poets, uh, who, uh, you know, kind of organize, help to organize some of uh, Birmingham's youth and some of the poetry, uh, you know, outlets that are here in town and uh, with Brave New Voices and that poetry competition as well. Cool. So... You interview him for a documentary, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, JP and Jessica, do you want to jump in? What would be great, and if you don't mind, is to give us some personal introduction. Um, like, how did you get involved with Hear Me? And as you're describing Hear Me, too. But just start by introducing yourself a little bit. Our shtick oh. usually works better when we're in person. Um, but, Jess K., why don't you go first? It's not much different. Come on. <laughs> um, okay, so I Hear Me is a project that's about four and a half years old right now, um, and about three and a half years ago I came to Hear Me. I had just finished my master's uh, in elementary education at the University of Pittsburgh and was looking for a job, was subbing part-time uh, at local district, um, working at Starbucks. Looking for something that was really getting me working more with students, and so I started working just part time at Hear Me. Um, Hear Me was just getting up and going, and so we weren't really sure how this big concept of of taking youth voice um, and getting kids to speak up about issue about things that they wanted to talk about, and then connecting it to the public. Um, that was sort of the initial goal of Hear Me, very broad like that, and. Um, I started on the project right as, as that was um, that was where it was when I started. Since then, it has really developed into something that's much more based on um, specific topics and also on who's going to be hearing me. So there's a lot of advocacy work that goes around what Hear Me does. Um, and so I feel very, very lucky that I've got to stay and see all that happen and then move up from assistant. Uh, and as the project changed and it became something that... Um, that I grew with, and so now the project uh, is a little bit different, and I'm still here. <laughs> cool. And I, I think um, I love education. That's definitely where my passion is. And being in a classroom, you know, sometimes I miss, I, I still long for having my own group of students and to be able to develop those deep relationships with them and see them grow through a whole year. Um, but I also feel really, really lucky to be able to work in this space of informal education, continue to work with students all over, and, and uh, hopefully still have an impact on education and education policy, but just in a very different way than where I thought I was going. By the way, if anybody's listening to this and wanna, wants to jump off and go right away, it's uh, here-me. Um, 
uh, .net. Is that right? Yes. That's how you find it. JP, welcome. Um, I had had a little bit of experience following my college experience working with youth and uh, media production. Um, when Hear Me found me, and I found Hear Me, um, the former director of the project was looking for somebody who could help start a video arm of the, uh, the project. So up until that point, um, Jess had been there working with the team to focus mostly on audio production with kids, which meant that we were they were doing a lot of audio interviews with them um, and then figuring out the right places to apply their audio. Um, so that was a large part of my role um, and is becoming a larger part of my role with the project. Um, my background is in film production um, and that's what I really love. Um, I love storytelling and I think it's one of the most powerful mediums to affect change um, and to reach people and to reach their hearts and let people understand what uh, what's really happening in the education system today. Um, I've learned a lot about education from Jess, who's the, sort of the education expert on our team. Um, and uh, it's like she said, it's been really fun to grow this project and watch this project grow um, and experience um, all these different types of kids that we get to work with throughout Pennsylvania and even other places that we get to work with young people. Um, so I hope that's a good introduction um, for the end of our very long day. <laughs> yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, Mary Beth, Shantanu, and Al, uh, please jump in with any questions, even right now, if you'd like to start us off. Any initial questions you want to start with? I have one. Go this ahead, Mary Beth. Yeah. Um, I'm actually voicing Peggy, Joy's, uh, Peggy George's question, which is on the chat line, which is um, why... Is it why is this considered provocative? It was described as provocative. Right. Well, do you want to read that paragraph? <laughs> you or we could. You, did they hear me? Referring to it. Yeah. Where is that? But you can you can just go ahead and answer it, JP or, or Jessica. Sure. Why is hear me considered provocative? Uh -huh. Yeah, I think she's looking at your homepage or your. Oh. Your, Yes. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Never heard uh, anyone so, say that so, before. <laughs> and now I'm trying to find the, um, the actual... Do you want to take this, Jess, or do you want me to? Can you read the sentence that it comes from, Mary Beth? I think it comes from your mission statement. Yeah, where is that now? Here, I'll find it. Um, if you, yeah, if you just go to the... Uh, it pops right up. Yeah. Hear Me is a platform that gives prominence to, uh, specifically to youth voice. Hear Me empowers schools, after school programs, community. Um, where does this say provocative? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Thanks for provocative. I can try to do okay. our best to, to translate that. Um, okay, go for it. <laughs> I don't think that <laughs> the, uh, the concept of youth voice is something that's uh, very new. Um, but in my experience, uh, moving with youth voice um, through digital tools might be what's provocative, um, or at least appealing to people. Um, it's definitely an interesting way to capture and archive um, and share what it is that youth have to say. Um, I think one of the really neat things, um, or at least one of the special things to me about what the work that we do is that we are working with finding a way to pair digital voices um, with physical artifacts. Um, so our website has a catalog of over 7,000 stories um, that are short pieces, about two minutes long, um, of young people speaking on really important issues, or at least issues that they have decided are important and we want to give prominence to. Um, but in addition, we don't leave their voices just hanging out on the internet because too often those things can get lost <laughs> on the internet that is growing exponentially. Um, what we do with some of their stories is we take them and put them into this physical artifact that we call a Hear Me kiosk, um, which is about a um, one foot long by one foot long um, uh, display device that has a tin can telephone that's a playback tool mm -hmm. so that this physical artifact can go into public places um, and it takes the digital out of that, that virtual realm and puts it into people's um, people's ears, <laughs> for, for uh, better or worse. Um, 
And that's what we that's what I think is really interesting about uh, and important about the work that we do is we don't keep it all log you know all on the internet. We take it to public places and we give it to a place we bring it to places where people can hear them um, and are sort of confronted um, by by youth voice and it's um, I think that's the, one of the really neat things. And I'm rambling a little bit. Anything to add, Jess? Uh, no, I was just sending a link to where you could see what that kiosk looks like. Um, and, and Jessica uh, Kaminsky, if if I, I will do this, but if you want to put links that get preserved, it, it, it's at edtechtalk.com slash ttt. Um, there's a Titan board there, and that's where Peggy is asking provocative questions. <laughs> to, just to tease her. Uh -huh. So yeah, so I mean, you're, the campaign you're doing right now is pretty provocative. Do you want to? Why don't we jump to an example, um, the police example that you're working on? You are still on that, I think, right? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> for two weeks longer than we thought. Uh, so why don't you break that down? Where did the idea come from? Did it come from students? How? Yeah. You know, how did you? It's, does that make sense? I think it does. To kind of tell the whole story of that campaign. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Hear Me traditionally was going and working with groups of students who said, you know, uh, we've identified this as a big topic that we want to tell other people about. These are the people that we want to tell about it, and this is the impact we want to have it make. Uh, so, for example, we want our principal to understand what it takes to have really great teachers in the school, and we want him to use the things that we find important in teacher evaluation. So that would be an example. And we would help them make media, um, usually audio media, that express what they had to say, um, and then share it not only with that specific principle, but then also on our website. So we start so, so, okay, I'm sorry to ask you to tell a little more detail there. How do you how do you choose the schools you go to? How do they choose you? Um, yeah. So in the beginning, anybody yeah. and everybody. <laughs> right. Sure. Uh, they, uh, we were we were reaching out specifically to groups. Um, still do a little bit. Uh, but now we have a lot more people that are coming to us and asking to participate, um, asking if they can participate with us. Mm -hmm. So we still try to include everybody um, in doing this, but we've taken our focus less from um, supporting small groups and more towards this campaign effort, um, which narrows down a little bit who can participate. So for example, right now we're asking kids in the city of Pittsburgh to talk about this. Um, others can share their voice too, but our team's resources are going towards making media just from kids who live in the city of Pittsburgh. Um, so we do a little bit of, of uh, monitoring who's participating in that way, or, or, or um, deciding who we're going to use our resources for. So what I mean by that is for a lot of our work, we go out and work with kids to create this media. So we are interviewing them and then taking what they have to say and making media pieces about it. Or we're teaching them how to interview each other. Or we're teaching them how to do audio editing. Um, so that's... So you, you work with teachers to do that, I assume? Or how does that... Is that different in different schools? Um, it's different in different schools. Our best is to teach teachers. Um, but... A lot of times, um, it's through a, a group that's not necessarily in a classroom. Um, so, for example, a, a group of students that are meeting as part of a separate project within the school um, at lunchtime or something like that. Um, so, so, or a, a group over the summer uh, where we're teaching everybody that's there, um, students and teachers alike, so that they're learning together. Um, and. Also, uh, I really love teaching the students. Um, they pick it up a lot faster. <laughs> They're willing to get dirty and experiment with it. Um, and so it's, it's really fun to teach the students these kinds of things. OK, I'm, I, I was just kind of curious if I could jump in. Like, what's, what's the, um, I guess, the, the, the feedback loop or, or, the, or the results? I mean, like, after you come out with this message, whether it's audio or video, like, how do the kids, or how does the organization kind of determine what effect, if any, this this creation of, of media has had? Yeah, so um, a couple of different things. One, we have these specific output devices that are these kiosks. So 
if you take it and you put it in a physical place, there's a way for people to respond back, uh, which includes either online or just physically right back to the student right there. Uh, and we've gotten a lot of response on that. Uh, I think one kiosk in particular had over 50 responses in four months and included donations and volunteers uh, back to this specific group that had put this media out there. So I would say that that's one way to, uh, to get the feedback on it. Um, another way that I really love getting, uh, that um, we make sure that we continue to share this media and get feedback on it is that we partner with, um, around some of these really big topics that we're talking to students all about the same topic, we take that media and give it to an advocacy partner on it. And so they have a very big group of, uh, a big audience that's hearing it, and so that audience is supposed to do something on behalf of it. So, for example, um, submitting, submitting testimony to the State Select Committee on the topic of school climate, and then watching what the State Select Committee does with that testimony and the decisions that they're making going forward. So some of it's very um, much more immediate and uh, directly responsive to the student, and some of it is much more higher level, long term, um, more about informing, and um, you know the change happens so much later, and and some of it's much more immediate than that. Anything to add to that, Jess? Um, yeah, I think um, as I probably don't need to tell you as teachers, but um, oftentimes we see we see the youth transformation almost immediately. Um, and when we get to work with groups, whether it's us or um, other partners who are who are recording kids, the instant that you tell them why you're recording them and and communicating the value of their voices in some of these conversations, um, you start to see an entirely different child um, during this process. And usually we're working with kids from, you know, f less than an hour, um, if that. And uh, in the process of, of doing an interview one-on-one, -on -one, um, you, see, you see something come over their faces where they kind of get it um, and they feel and and communicate that they understand that they have a responsibility in some of these issues. So, for example, in our in our project that our campaign that talked about um, school climate, these kids began communicating that they had ownership over their school and that they felt responsible to and for the well-being of others in their school, um, and that sharing their stories about their schools would actually make a difference. Um, and being able to back that up with a, our partnership with the Education Law Center was huge um, because that meant that these kids were contributing their work to something that wasn't being graded. Um, or sometimes it might have been graded depending on the partner that we worked with. Um, how, I, can't, how you, I can't speak to that. Sorry, but, um, JP, I, I just wanted, when you say you backed it up with that law center, how did you do that? I mean, what did that um, mean? So that was our advocacy partner who uh -huh. um, had committed to bringing their stories to the audiences, which in the case Jess said earlier was um, the state select committee um, in Pennsylvania that was that was formed to um, draft policy around school climate. So that was a very real thing for them. Um, it wasn't it wasn't media that was going to go sit uh, sit in somebody's desktop or something like that. It was going to a real mm -hmm. place. Um, and they knew that their voices were contributing to something larger than themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, as teachers, I'm sure you guys have seen that awareness happen so many times. Um, but that was the hook for me on this project when I got to see that it um, it actually changed some of these kids. Mm -hmm. So I hope that is a is a good answer. Also, anybody want to throw anything else in at this point? Any thoughts, questions? <laughs> How are you guys funded? <laughs> uh, local, local, foundations. local foundations. Is there a charge to the schools? No, we give you stuff usually. Um, so, uh, we have a, a couple of different ways that we work. Um, so for a lot of the audio interviews that we do, no, there's no charge to a school. Um, we provide free training for anyone who can make it to one of our trainings. Uh, we also have audio recorders for uh, 
professional level field recorders that we use, uh, Zoom recorders, and so we'll also lend those out to schools that, or anyone that's trying to do a project and needs that kind of equipment, um, that we do lend that out. Um, in addition to this campaign project that we do, where we're partnering with an advocacy organization and, and getting as many students to talk about one topic as possible to reach decision makers in that topic, um, and, and then the other way, supporting small groups that have their own topic and audience that they want to create media for. Um, Jess also runs a documentary program with four schools. Um, also, no charge to them. you got to let us come into the classroom. you got to let us um, work with these students and have the freedom and bravery to listen to uh, the documentaries that the students make on topics that are chosen by the students. Um, we actually work with the Writing Project here a lot to do that. Um, as a way to help the students write what their documentary is, um, what that storytelling is, and sure doesn't feel like writing uh, when you're telling a story through a documentary, but if you do it well, you are storytelling in exactly the same way that you'd be writing. Um, and for that, no, actually, again, that's also funded by one of our local foundations, um, but as part of that project, schools get tech equipment. Um, and, and technical training on how to use that equipment as part of the program. Uh, we didn't believe that it was sustainable or ethical to give them equipment that wasn't high quality, that wasn't useful, and that was something that was just going to go sit somewhere or, or the only person could use. Uh, so we train the students on it, we train the teacher on it, we leave it there, um, and, it's, and it's equipment that's purposeful for documentary filmmaking, um, but then also stays in the school. So I noticed. I think I started to look. Can you can you record right on the site or not? Like with your webcam, or no? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I thought I thought I saw it there. <laughs> anyway. That's a tabled feature for right now. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Until people really demand it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Tommy Bateau, uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Just so and jump in. You do a lot of media. You're an English teacher in Colorado, but go ahead. Yeah, I'm in uh, Windsor, Colorado, uh, and it's a pleasure to be here um, chatting with you. And I've done, uh, uh, I used to teach media studies, and now I teach creative writing, and I try to do a lot of um, uh, film work with them to let them uh, try to, you know, experience storytelling in different ways. Um, and so I'm really interested in, in what you guys are doing. I went and visited your webpage last night when I got the invite for this, and it sounds really interesting. So well, I'm looking forward to finding out more. Cool. Cool. So talk to me, talk to us about um, the length of these. Most of them are like one, two minutes long. Is that right? And then do do you put compilations together, or how does that work? Or like, and what's the decision about the length? In the early days of the project, um, the length really varied, um, and we had the pleasure of of um, getting some advice from a bunch of folks who uh, ran children's museums throughout the country. Um, and they were really interested in the project, but they gave us the very wise advice that uh, shorter is better, especially when it comes to curation. Um, and that was a really interesting way for us to think about the work that we did, um, especially in thinking about the audience, both uh, in terms of um, our role in connecting their stories to the audiences, but also in terms of talking to the students about how you deliver your content and ideas to an audience. So that being mm -hmm. said, um, when we conduct an interview with people, the duration is average around six minutes. Um, I've seen them be longer depending on um, how talkative our young person is, and I've seen them be shorter. Um, so it, that kind of varies. Um, on our website, we have um, we figured out that people will usually listen up to two minutes. Um, sometimes and sometimes even less than two minutes. That just seems to be the human uh, attention span. In the <laughs> physical kiosks that we use, um, we usually keep them to 45 seconds to a minute. Since they're in public spaces, um, we've, we've found out that people won't stand around and listen to something that's two minutes, but they will, they will give us 45 seconds to a minute of their time. Hmm. So that might bear the question, do you edit the audio? And the answer is yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> We, Who, uh, you, you, you edit, or yeah? Or the uh, kids edit, most or, of the yeah. time, um, most of the time it's us editing. 
we do get lucky sometimes and have uh, kid gr kids who want to edit or teachers or um, other youth facilitators who, who are willing to edit, uh, which just helps move things along quicker. Um, when we edit, we do our best to make sure that we're staying true to the, the message of the kids. So we're usually only editing our voices out of, out of their interview, um, and sometimes we'll break them up into uh, segments that are fewer than two minutes. There is a format for the interviews, is that right? Um, and sure. can you talk about that? And maybe even just do one. Do, what's the question about the police? Is it uh, um, what, uh, what's, what are the police like in your neighborhood? I, I don't have it in front of me. I so. think we can recite these by now, huh, Jess? Okay, go for it. Oh, man, can I? In my sleep. Inter interview Shantanu or somebody here. Or <laughs> no, seriously, can you, can you break, actually show us what an interview would feel like? Yeah, um, so right now we're working on a campaign with an advocacy group here in Pittsburgh that's run by a former councilman. And Pittsburgh is getting ready to have a new chief of police. Just to give you a little context for why we're doing this. Uh, Pittsburgh's getting ready for a new chief of police. I'm hoping you... <laughs> uh, it doesn't reflect super great on Pittsburgh, but our former chief of police is currently in prison. Um, he we, and we've is experienced that in New York, too, so go ahead. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> our uh, former mayor is being investigated by the FBI right now, and our current chief of police, I think, just got sentenced to, I believe it's eight months in jail um, for slush fund. Um, so having a new mayor, there's a lot of... He, he, one, I think, is really genuine about wanting to include public opinion in the decisions that he's making, mm -hmm. and two, there's a lot of just pressure from the citizens of Pittsburgh to make sure that he's making the right decisions on these. So it's really timely that we have the opportunity to bring the youth perspective to this topic. And that's where our position is on this conversation. So we're working with a former councilman um, who's helping to connect us to city council and to the mayor. So uh, that's our advocacy partner on this topic is this group called Allies for Children. Um, and so our, our role in it, while he connects us to the mayor and city council, we connect to all the kids of Pittsburgh, as many as who want to participate. And so that's where we um, coordinate with schools, trying to go and visit a school, um, with after-school programs, with other organizations. Um, with, we were at a church last Saturday. Uh, we're at a community craft and maker space this coming Saturday. Um, all kinds of places to bring lots of student perspective on this one topic together. So that's why, because we want to include so many students, that's why we've taken on the editing for a lot of this. Um, I think it says much more about the process of shaping your story if you have time for the editing individually. Uh, or, sorry, if the students have the time to do that themselves. Um, but for the goals of this is to get lots of participation, so that's why we've taken on the editing for it. So. What happens is usually um, one of us is walking into a school with a field recorder and sitting down and talking to a, a group of students about you know, making sure that they understand why this campaign is important and who will be who will be hearing it and what they're going to use this information for, um, which is where you get a lot of the mayor. The mayor cares what I have to say, um, which is really fantastic to be able to say, yeah, he, he does. Um, and I think that's sort of where... For a lot of students, um, it starts switching over, and so they go from running around to really sitting down and thinking about, with this kind of audience, what do I want to say? Um, and so I've gotten a lot of um, students who would typically write off as uninterested or focused on something else, or you know, this isn't going to be their kind of thing to really sit down and talk very thoughtfully um, and spend some time thinking about what they're going to say and then about what this topic is and what it means to them. So usually it's me and a, and a recorder shoved in a, <laughs> really close to someone's face. Um, asking and what do you say? For this, for this one, what do, what's your first question? Uh, I mean, is there, is there, are, there, are there sort of standard kinds of questions? I thought you said there were. So. Uh, usually starts out with something just give information. Give something simple. Let's get talking. Let's, let's set where the... Um, find out where the current climate is. So, and then moving into things that are a little bit, you know, moving up the hierarchy. You know, what's what's how can we get a little bit more analytical about this? And what are your feelings on these kinds of topics? Um, it usually ends with something about 
in the future, you know, well, what would you want to see happen, or, or what's the next step for this kind of topic, which is how these ones move. So it goes from uh, what's your perception of police officers, positive, negative, or neutral? What's the job of a police officer? Why does someone become a police officer? To um, have you ever had an interaction with a police officer, and can you tell me about it? And you know, do you think that your relationship with police officers is typical or atypical of, of young people in your neighborhood? Um, and then moving into tell you know we talked about that we're doing this so the mayor's going to hear it and the mayor's going to make the best choice about the chief of police. What would you say that the that the next chief of police needs to be like? Um, what kind of advice do you have for the mayor for city council? What would you tell the chief of police when they accept this position? Um, what they can be doing to make the relationship between young people and officers uh, to improve that relationship? Um, so that's. And never end an interview with saying, "Is there anything I haven't asked you about uh, mm -hmm. that you wanted to talk about?" Because that's um, either no, some tangent, or that's when the really good stuff comes out because they've been waiting to say something you haven't asked them about. JP, do you have anything to add? Um, that's about it. I think we <laughs> we sort of unintentionally stumbled upon uh, this formula. Um, and we did have help from a really fantastic um, young man who was a Coro Fellow, which I believe you also have the Coro Fellowship Program in New York. Um, but he helped us figure out that what we were really doing was asking questions along the hierarchy of critical thinking. Um, and we were like, oh, yeah, that's true, we are. Um, so, you know, we sort of explained to the kids that the questions are going to get a little bit harder, um, but just be honest and give, me, give us your honest opinion. Um, and that's, like Jess said, uh, when the really, really honest and thoughtful stuff will come out. Um, and it's amazing, and it surprised us at first that it really worked. And um, boy, do kids love to tell you what they think would work. And uh, I think a lot of times they're right. <laughs> that's my opinion. I have a question. Um, I'm wondering, uh, do you both work with... Uh, with your own class, or do you just go in uh, and work in, in, in various schools with students? Um, how does that all work? So we are based at a Carnegie Mellon University okay. at the Create Lab, which is a lab at the Robotics Institute. Um, so the re most of the other projects in the lab are much more related to traditional robotics. We're sort of more on the fringe um, of robotics. But it's the idea of how do you take technology and use it to empower groups of people. In our case, it's how do you empower young people through technology. Um, so that's how we fit in the lab. Lab's got a lot of really, really awesome tech projects that are that you should all check out. Um, but we work out of Carnegie Mellon, and so what we do is we work. We don't have our own classrooms. Um, we go into schools, all kinds of schools, uh, from pre-K through 12, um, and then also working uh, after school groups, and libraries, a fantastic place to meet up with young people. Um, we, we found some really strong partnerships in the library here. Um, so a lot of times it's, for this project specifically, it's short-term engagement with students. Um, and then the pre and post of the interview is very much reliant on the group that we're going in meeting with. So the teacher or the, the, um, the other person there, we do give the media back when it's been produced and, and ask them to listen to it, and hopefully that's a tool for them to continue the conversation about media, about the topic, where, wherever they're taking it. Um, and then also, if your stories are shared anywhere, we try and let them know, hey, your story's now in the Department of Education. You should know sure. that it's in D.C. and someone's listening to what you had to say. <laughs> I'm wondering if you ever... Uh partner with teachers because, for example, right now in my school, um, in my freshman class, we're doing inquiry projects where they explore a problem and, uh, you know, it has to be related to their community in some way. And, and I'm just wondering if any teachers have kind of taken you up on this and kind of had you do the interviews and then had students go out and do more research, find more questions about it, and then do a second interview later. I think that would be fascinating. No, as far as that... That project scope? No, we, I don't think that we've, not that we know of, that they've done a second set of interviews or uh, research post interview um, for this topic specifically, or for this method of engagement specifically. How, uh, how long do your campaigns go? The, like the police campaign, how long is that going? 
Right now, we've been doing about three to four months of gathering the stories and about three to four months of sharing the stories once they've been created. Mm -hmm. uh, so setting up partnerships with places where we can put those kiosks out for people to see or connecting it to other advocacy organizations, just doing a share out of all the media that we've gotten. Um, we're reworking that timeline <laughs> because uh, we've, we've had a lot of positive responses. Um, and so people are calling significantly after we thought we were done with a campaign um, mm -hmm. to want to continue to use that material or to talk about Because they exist on the yeah. internet. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just teasing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly, which is a great yeah. thing. Um, yeah. but, al but also means that you know, instead of doing four campaigns a year, we're going to be doing two, and they're going to be a little bit longer, so we can really take our time and, and give the um, give the media and the students what it deserves. So, Tommy, if I could, if I could uh, jump off of what you just said, because my, I mean, I, many of us on Youth Voices do that. A kind of similar start with kids' interest. Explore you. Re you're having them explore a. A problem in the community, is that right? Yeah, yeah. The project is uh, they have to uh, come up with a problem that they've seen in the community, and it, it can, you know, it could be pretty far-reaching. In fact, I showed them uh, a lot of those crocodile um, documents. So, for example, mm -hmm. you know, um, they might not have realized it before, but after reading some of those, they might see that, you know, the chocolate they buy is influencing different places in the world. You know, there's a lot of child labor in uh, the Ivory Coast or something like that. And so, after they kind of uh, propose what the problem is, then they go out and uh, do an inquiry on it, find whatever information they can, and try to come up with more questions about it um, to kind of expand the scope of their uh, of their thinking on a on a problem. I mean, I just thought it would fit perfectly with what you guys are doing because you're kind of introducing a problem that many students may not have even really thought too much about. Um, so I think it'd be interesting to see if, because I, I think that kind of interaction would create a lot of excitement. So maybe the students after that would be pretty eager to do a little bit of research on it and, and see what's happening and, and kind of what some of the issues are. And and then it'd be um, interesting to get another sort of, you know, I mean, that's kind of the final paper for us, but you could do another interview to see what they, what they end up with, how they think about it after they've done a little research. Absolutely. So Jess, um, Jess's documentary project, I, I shouldn't say we don't do that because we s sort of do it. Um, Jess's documentary project, we do try and interview the students at the beginning as they're just coming up with what they think their documentary topic should be about. Um, and then also try and get back and interview them at the end after they've gone through the filmmaking process, after they've interviewed experts and, and peers and uh, created a film about it to see okay. um, what, how their opinions on the topic have changed, um, but also as a method of evaluation for us in our program. Okay. Right, but those are kids that we have... Um, a long-term um, connection with. You know, we get to see them at least once a week. Um, we have had groups doing the audio projects that um, there were very few who had the kids do research on projects beforehand. Um, and they were, interestingly enough, always community-based when they did do the research. Um, and that just made for some really, really powerful audio that these kids were able to, um, to quote you know, stats and figures, um, and even people sometimes. So um, I think what I think the idea you have is a great one. Call us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the other thing too that does make me think that um, so part of what we do is when when this media is made is we try and share it physically in addition to digitally. Um, and I think that as you start getting community responses back on these physical displays and installations that it leads to a whole, I, I would think that it would, could lead to a whole other avenue of inquiry and, and um, also that you're getting community interest in the same thing that you're interested in. Um, and that's sort of positive reinforcement on the topic, but also might lead you in a different direction as to you know, where the community thinks that this topic is or, or where you might be interested in taking it. Um, so I think that would also be really interesting. Yeah, I looked at your web page and I saw those the boxes that you put up in uh, coffee shops and stuff. Those look really neat, um, and I'd love to, uh, you know, figure out the technology to do something like that to be able to get my students' voices out too. Because I think that's you know that's part of uh, change is getting student voices out, and that's what Youth Voices is kind of all about too. So, and when the student knows that their voice isn't, I mean, 
that a voice is going into a community. It's when you have that very, very tangible audience, uh, changes the way that they create that media. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure you know this. Um, I'll also say, Tommy, give us a call. Those boxes are available for $100. We can talk about grant funding, <laughs> funding or whatever. Uh, the more so places that they are, the are more they... people can be used, the better. Okay. Uh, are, is there, like, how to design them yourself, too, or not? Or they're just... Um, or how do they... I'm... I couldn't design it myself. Yeah. If you take that idea and, and make it work, fantastic. <laughs> We'd love to see it. I, um. <laughs> I don't know how... I, I, I do want to circle back to questions like local, national, like we've got people from different states right now, and you said call you, but your focus is, is on Pittsburgh, and I think that's been wonderful. And, and, and here, but here's, I wanted to get Mary Beth back for a second. Mary Beth, could you just say what the letters were to the, um, Mayor de Blasio, and what the topics were the kids talked about, and how you came up with those topics? This is an, another example from another place here. So, um, we had a mayor that was elected in November and took office on uh, New Year's Eve, and around Christmas time, I thought it would be a cool idea to give my students an opportunity to write to the mayor about concerns for them. So I encouraged them to pick a topic that kind of was interesting to them, and it basically fell into three groups, um, crime, I guess four groups, crime, stop and frisk, um, education, and jobs. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that no child was working alone, that there were always somebody else that they either paired or tripled with someone. They had to do research so that they would sound knowledgeable. So there were kids, you know, Googling stop and frisk and watching videos in which children were being interviewed about what it's like to be frisked, how they don't like it. Kids were telling stories of how they got pushed up against the wall. Um, other kids were saying... Um, you know, I, I like I like math, of course they're going to say that because they're in my room, but they also said, but it's not the only thing that's important. Why is that the only thing that's, you know, so important, math and ELA? And then another young man wrote about how his parents had been unemployed for, like, years and it, the effect on him. And another girl wrote, um, the minimum wage is set to go up to $10.10. That's not even enough money. Um, and that can lead to fighting in families. And so they had facts that were, uh, you know, they had facts and they had real life experience. And it was very powerful for them. And so, they're so waiting for the mayor to write back. And, yeah, uh, right. So and that's, we, what, that's what he does. This is where I wanted to jump in. Because, cause like, a, a couple of your kids have gotten really wonderful responses um, from, uh, you know, peers in different places. Mm -hmm. And more will get as we go here. Because they're published on Youth Voices. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea of setting up a an advocacy group, a partner, advocacy partner around some of those issues is a really fascinating idea that I want to learn from Hear Me. Um, and the the way y even, even your kind of relatively simple project there had four different topics how you would find partners for each of those four topics gets messy. And if you imagine Tommy's class having, what, 20 topics, you know, I just, which we want them to do, and those topics change over time because of inquiry. Um, so those, that's some of the messiness that, that we think is powerful. <laughs> but I love the idea of ad advocacy groups. And, and you don't just hope the mayor reads the stuff. They actually do. Right. And then I want to ask a question, Mary Beth. Can you imagine them doing some audio and that getting the mayor's attention, having heard the description here tonight? Or Yes, I could. I teach special education students, so a few students would need to practice their speaking. Um, and yet on one occasion this year, one of my students was interviewed for something, and she did a really wonderful job off the cuff. So... Maybe they're more sophisticated than I'm giving them credit for, but there is a few of them that stumble and stammer their way through just about any response. So I would think maybe those kids would want some rehearsal, or maybe they're more comfortable behind the camera than in front of it. Mm -hmm. um, we do. Go ahead, I Jessica. Think about stutters. <laughs> yeah, you do. 
We, we also, like a year ago after the Newtown, Connecticut tragedy, my students created memorials that we sent to the families, and some of my students chose to write to the president. Um, we watched his speech in class, and the kids really felt for him. One of the kids wrote, you look so sad and tired, and I just want you to know it will get better. And it was, like, so <laughs> sweet and, and generous. And, you know, of course, we got a letter back and, you know, a, a, a picture signed with an auto pen. With, but I didn't have the heart to tell the kids it was an auto pen. Um, but it's framed and hanging in our classroom. So you do get answers from presidents and senators, but they're not authentic letters. You know, thanks for your concern, da-da-da-da. So um, I think there's something special about what you're doing in which you get some authentic interaction with um, leaders. Thank you. Well, this is our... Um for a lot of them, for a lot of the campaigns that we've done so far, um, the and there have only been three. <laughs> yeah. well, so what was the third one then? I, I was going to ask you what the whole list was. But. So the first one was school climate. The second one was food security, with a specific focus on school mm -hmm. breakfast programs. Um, the third one was on positive behavior interventions and supports, or our sort of the flip side of school climate, which a lot of it came out after Newtown. Um, talking about discipline policies and how zero tolerance policies are affecting students. Um, and so PBIS um, was much more about how these uh, positive behavior systems in schools work and, and are they different and what did the students think about them. And then this one's with police. We use that language here too in New York. It's funny. Go ahead. But yeah, PBIS. But go, yeah. Um, um, so PBIS, we're getting ready to share at a conference. Um, with about 400 educators from across the state. Um, but with the food security, it's mostly being, those stories are mostly being used by a local advocacy group that goes and talks directly to principals and directly to school admin and, and um, so I, the, the food person, the name's escaping me right now. Um, but in using this as part of it, well, you know what, it's really difficult because we'd have to change the bus schedule. What Tyler says <laughs> when he doesn't eat and it's worth it and, and being able to point to what, our, what young people who are going through that experience say is how they're using these stories. Um, so getting the feedback back on that one is going to be long term and uh, definitely much on a much uh, lower scale than the mayor. So this is our first time working with a group that's as direct and as high level as the mayor. Um, so the state yeah. select committee took it and listened, and it was considered as part of the testimony. Uh, we thought that was a really big win, that it was allowed to be submitted as part of that. Um, but we didn't get a letter back from them. Um, I, I think that the reason why I'm so excited about this one with police is that it's the mayor, um, and, and like I said at the beginning, all eyes are on him. So I, I feel very, very confident that, uh, one, because of who he is, but also because we have someone as a partner who has... Um, in the beginning of doing this work, he's agreed that he will listen to this. Um, he helped facilitate that relationship for us, so that he knows that this is coming, and he's agreed that he will listen. Chantanu, I'm sorry I didn't get to you earlier, but yeah, sorry, I just want to thank I, I'm jumping here, I know it's getting late. Um, Chantanu, any thoughts about integrating some of this with what you do already, or... Just uh, I, yeah, I've been spending the whole hour... At, uh, trying to think of, of what I could do with this. Uh, uh, you know, most of the stuff that I'm doing uh, with my kids right now is with writing and uh, with the seventh graders it's uh, been uh, creating animation. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't really uh, spent a lot of time with uh, having them tell their stories uh, in audio. But your kids do research projects, right? Or, uh, yeah, some, the, some. Yeah, the tenth graders do research projects. Uh, uh, self-chosen questions. Self-chosen questions uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, free inquiry. Uh, it's it, 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 by the tenth grade, it gets uh, pretty structured. Uh, but uh, uh, even uh, my eighth graders, I, I do uh, have them do inquiry around topics mm. that, they, that they choose. Uh, but in terms of expressing themselves uh, in that way, uh, I haven't really gotten that much success, uh, at least on a uh, 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 large scale, with, mm -hmm. with, with these kids. 
in in uh, uh, talking about their uh, their views on uh, these kinds of subjects. Uh, mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, good. So it's pushing us all to think. That's great. I so one of the things that um, JP and Jessica. Um, and, and I talked about is that early on, and people don't necessarily know this, but Youth Voices was originally a was a podcasting site where where people were sharing audio, um, and um, and then we realized that there's a lot of other media and so forth. And Shantanu, your work w around Scratch is a wonderful example of how to share that stuff. But a lot of it is written. Um, however. W and I want to get back to this more, but when when we've had students actually read their posts, there there have been, and then it becomes a process where they're posting, you know, a dozen times during the year. And if they're reading each of those posts, their writing changes because they know they're going to read and record it. There, so the writing becomes more conversational, more um, more audience oriented. I I would say. So that's just. Uh, we can't explore that now in the next two minutes, but I just wanted to put that out there as an interesting kind of. To, if if we, we should keep talking about how you guys do audio, how we do writing, and how the, there's it's really a spectrum that we might mess with there a little bit. But I'll, but what I'd love for you, J JP and, and Jessica, to do here at the end is think with us a little bit about how you like all of us value local. Local is really important. Um, but we also value like others. Um, so like the police thing has a very specific, you know, purpose, and that's great. But it would be interesting to hear you know a kid in the Bronx say what they think of the police too, and kind of get those mixed up. So have you thought about that the issue of local and national? Let's put it that way, or anything else you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'll go fast. Um, it's okay. Yes, uh, this this is very very local for us, and, and we've been flirting with that line of you know is it is it better to go really local and watch watch a change happen, or aim for really national and you know maybe I can get the mayor's ear. I don't know that I can get President Obama's ear. Um, so so being able to to work on those two levels, uh, they do they definitely both have their pros and cons. At the same time, I think that. While we've got this specific audience here, like you said, every these are topics that are relevant to students all across the country. Um, and so for a lot of them, we do have people submitting on these topics. It won't be part of what I present to the mayor if you send me something from New York, but it will go and be part of the group that lives online, uh, which hopefully other advocacy groups will find. Um, the students can see what else is going on there. It can create a conversation that's bigger than what's being turned into the mayor on there and as we move forward with some other topics um, for campaigns I think that that will happen more and more it's happened in the past this one just happens to be very local focused um, mm -hmm. the other thing yeah, and I'm wondering how if, if maybe the campaigns will become more asynchronous like ongoing and on top of each other but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want that all team members <laughs> <yeah>. um, <laughs> So the other thing is, is uh, a lot of these are the campaigns, and so we have uh, four campaign topics that we've done. But we have stories of so many different topics on our website mm -hmm. um, that were done in in a different fashion, where the students were saying, "This is what I want to talk about," and and help me connect it uh, based on the topic that I've come up with. So there are things uh, from a group in New York City, from global kids who were talking about what their school is like and what can support them there, uh, to refugee students here in Pittsburgh who were talking about what that experience was like to move over and to uh, either successfully or unsuccessfully assimilate into a new culture. Um, all so, kinds of I'm topics that could be both used as a piece for, um, as a publishing piece for them, or also for a conversation starter in another way. Uh, I know, like you do on your website a lot with going back and forth. Mm -hmm. I see, you know, yours are written, ours are audio and video, but they're all the same thing of students talking about the things that are important to them and doing this sort of uh, storytelling, info sharing uh, experience. So I think that uh, yeah. you have a lot more student feedback to each other on their site, but and that's something that we would really love to see more of. And if any of our media can play into that, we. We'd be thrilled. 
Yeah, and, and let me, and we're all talking fast here, <laughs> but um, I really, really appreciate how open all of your stuff is, um, that you can embed any of your uh, videos. So you, so a student who's working on bullying could go on and find um, a student on your site who's talking about bullying and say, I, I heard this, you know, on Hear Me, here it is, and then here's what I think um, in addition. Um, so, so that kind of use of the material is great. And you can actually download everything too, right? So, yeah, so that you've kept everything way open is really cool and allows for us to, to, imagine, to imagine, you know, interacting. Um, so great. JP, any final thoughts here? Um, no, that's, that's part of the mission of what we do, and that's um, one way that we're guessing this project is going to be successful and reach a lot of people and hopefully make a little bit of change. Um, but that's also part of the mission of our lab, um, at Cre the Create Lab, that everything is open and um, is either free or low cost. Um, and that's really what we believe in. But how, whatever we can do um, or play around with to try to empower uh, students, educators, Etc. That's really what um, the heart of that's what that's what is at the heart of this. Cool. Um, Mary Beth, any last thoughts you'd like to throw in here? I guess I've always been uh, amazed at how much my my kids really get into projects like this. It's not just the choice; it's also the idea that they're going to be listened to. Mm -hmm. And that is so powerful for them, the authentic audience. Um, and you try to create that in different ways in your classroom, but when the kids believe, and I, I think, Christine, you said this, that when they think it's really going to go out there, out somewhere, there's such an enthusiasm for it because they're spoken to all the time. They're talked to, at, they're talked at all the time. And you mean to say someone's really going to listen to something I have to say? There's a genuine enthusiasm for that. And, I, you know, I forgot to say that one of the things the New York City mayor was doing is citizens were going downtown to, like, this area that had been set up, and you could, you could talk to someone who would videotape you. It was a big deal. For, like, several weeks it was happening in the city. And, you know, I spoke to my kids about doing it, and they were all enthusiastic about it, but then I couldn't get the permission from the principal to leave the building for that for that reason because I'm a math teacher so I figured a way around that and that turned out to be the letters but yeah I mean where there's a will there's a way and teachers find their way and I really think this is a valuable tool that more teachers need to to utilize like get your kids voices out there thanks Mary Beth. Shantanu any anything you'd like to add? Uh, not at this time <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Thanks for thank you. Bye. Thank you, Tommy. Oh, it's uh, it's great. Out. I'm I'm really excited to. Uh, I'm definitely going to unleash my uh, students on your site to see if they can find anything related to the problems that they're researching. Uh, and uh, I just think it's great. Uh, so keep keep doing it. Thank you, Tommy. I was going to say our site, has, like Jess said, has over seven thousand stories on it. If there's something that they can't find, uh, please email me or call me, and I'll. See if there's something on there that I know about that they can't find. I'll do that. Very cool. Well, JP and Jessica, thank you so much um, for sharing. And I hope this, uh, you know, we will invite you back sometime and we can keep talking. And you help us think about what we do and hopefully it goes back and forth. Thank you very much. Um, we uh, always uh, end here by saying that we started uh, teach teaching teachers several years ago um, as part of the EdTech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network that Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier started. Um, and thank you all for coming tonight, and uh, we'll see some people again next week, next Wednesday. Talk to you all. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks so much. Good night.